everyone. Welcome back. We are doing our first example for a sine trig substitution. I have the integral of dx over x squared times the square root of 1 minus x squared. When you look at this problem, first thing is that you might see you have an expression that looks something like a squared minus u squared. Since that is the case, uh, and I can't do this by a normal u substitution, then this would be trig substitution for sine when we have a squared minus u squared. So we let u equal to a sine of theta will be our substitution. Um, in this case, a is 1 and u is x. I like to write those down. It helps at first when we're getting started learning it. So in this case, since u is x, that would be x equals a is 1, 1 sine theta. In other words, just x is sine theta. You'll also need a dx expression because you'll need to replace dx in terms of thetas and d thetas. So dx, if x is sine theta, then dx will be cosine of theta d theta. Using my substitution that I have here, I can think of this as a fraction. I can think of sine of theta as x over 1. And since I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, I can assign uh, these as sides in my right triangle. So opposite would be here, and hypotenuse would be here. And if I solve for the third side in my right triangle then, this squared plus this squared would equal that squared, then this is actually going to end up being the square root of 1 minus x squared. You can pause the video and check that for a minute if you're not sure. Okay, so we make all these substitutions here and we'll get an integral involving theta and d theta. So our dx becomes cosine theta d theta on top. And on the bottom, I have an x squared out front, so I get a sine squared theta. And then I also have the square root of 1 minus x squared, which becomes 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, I have a Pythagorean identity here. So this 1 minus sine squared theta is actually going to be cosine squared theta under the root. So I will do the additional step so I don't lose anybody in our video here. I have cosine theta d theta on the top. On the bottom, I have sine squared theta and the square root of cosine squared theta. I go ahead and reduce square root and square. We're in a right triangle, so all that stuff is positive in quadrant one. So I get sine squared theta on the bottom and just a cosine of theta. Okay, we can then reduce cosine theta over cosine theta. That just becomes 1. And so we get the integral of d theta over sine squared theta. Now, remember we said in the intro video, once you get to this point and you figure out you have this integral, how do I do it? Um, this is not friendly to see, I think, this way. What we will want to see this integral as maybe since sine is on the bottom, maybe think of this as a cosecant squared theta d theta, and it's really close to a definition, right? You might remember that negative cosecant squared is actually the derivative of cotangent, uh, so this is actually going to be negative cotangent of theta plus c. And now I'll need something simply to replace my cotangent of theta. So if I go back over to my triangle and I think about cotangent theta and what it is in a right triangle, well, that's the adjacent over the opposite, right? It's the reciprocal of tangent. So if I look in my right triangle here, my adjacent is the square root of 1 minus x squared, and my opposite is x. So if I go ahead and plug that in for cotangent theta, I should get my answer is negative root 1 minus x squared over x plus my constant. OK, that's our first sign example. Check out the others. We have additional ones. We also have examples for tangent and secant. We'll see you in the next video.